Well, one thing is for sure, the Green Party, and indeed all the parties on the left in Canada, the NDP, that small party in Quebec called Quebec Solidaire, and even much of the Liberal Party of Canada is moving hard left wing, not just economically, not just on global warming, of course they are, they're all socialist now, but I mean, they're becoming radical on social and cultural issues. They support Antifa violence and deplatforming, for example. They even support terrorist groups, or almost. And they're increasingly proudly anti-Semitic. It, it's not even a hatred that needs to be disguised anymore. They're sort of proud of it because they know, demographically speaking, being anti-Semitic is a net vote-getter, given mass immigration to Canada from anti-Semitic countries. I think people say things when they're drunk that, that are true, but that they know better not to say when they're sober. Here's Elizabeth May praising Omar Khadr a few years back. Remember this? Do you guys remember the theme song? Welcome back. Who knew Khadr was spelled K-H-A-D-R? Welcome back. Omar Cotter, it matters to say it. Welcome back, Omar Cotter, you're home. Does it strike you? I didn't use up my time. No, you didn't. There's a lot unusual about your speech, Liz, but we're going to take off. Omar Cotter, you got more class than the whole fucking cabinet. Thank you. Oh my God, that's cringeworthy. Uh, you know, that was a little bit shocking when she said it, but. I don't even think that's radical anymore to our media class, our political class. <clears throat> I don't know if you saw it, but during the election campaign, our David Menzies asked Elizabeth May about that. And she implied, oh, it's just a joke. Yeah, sure it was. Ms. May, uh, David Menzies with uh, Rebel News. Ms. May, in 2015, you stated that convicted terrorist Omar Khadr had more class than the entire effing conservative cabinet under Stephen Harper. Do you still believe in 2019 that this convicted terrorist has more class than the entire conservative party under Andrew Scheer? Have you ever been to a press gallery dinner? Do you yes. understand the concept of it being ridiculous with lots of humor? I'm sorry, that's not a real question. Oh, sorry, if, if this was an attempt at humor, supplemental question, do you think that the widow you think people and, the give fatherless children and the fatherless children of Christopher Spear, his murder victim, do you think they found that funny, Miss May? I don't think you understand the concept of press gallery dinner skits, but I will say this. There's very, uh, there's very questionable evidence that Omar Khadr committed the crime of which he was accused. It was at the disposal, it was the decision of the U.S. military to describe something that was in a war zone as terrorism, when in the common sense understanding of the word terrorism, it wasn't. And I recommend to you the journalism of Sandy Garasino, who has produced a photograph that makes it quite clear that at the moment that Mr. Khadr was supposed to have been able to throw a grenade, he was under a pile of rubble. The whole question is very fraught with historical revisionism and we're not that far into our history. We also know that his rights were violated because he was a child at the time that his parents took him into, that his father took him into a war zone. There's a lot wrong with that story. Now that's just made up, by the way. That's a conspiracy theory. Uh, Omar Khadr was tried and convicted in a court by a jury. She just made that up. She's, she's nuts. But if you think that's not, well, her caucus, holy cow, they make her look sane. Her, her Nanaimo MP is so radical that he was banned from running for the NDP. No problem. The Greens have no outer boundary and certainly no media scrutiny, do they? Other than the rebel, maybe. But the trouble is Canada's changing demographics aren't punishing that move to radicalism especially the embrace of Islamism or anti-Semitism and even sometimes pro-terrorism. Because if you bring in one million migrants from countries where terrorism is sort of normal or even praised as heroic, don't be surprised if they bring those values with them to Canada and then politicians court them on that basis. Let me give you an example of how anti-Semitic immigration just changes what's normal, the Overton window of acceptable social conduct. I don't know if you saw David Menzies' interview with the Jewish rabbi in Georgina, 
Ontario the other day. There was a Muslim immigrant to Canada named Saeed Ahmed, who vandalized a Jewish synagogue's property and posted Nazi images on, on their Facebook page. But the crazy thing is he, he didn't hide it. He, he didn't do it in the dark. He came right to the door of the Jewish rabbi and told him, yeah, it was him. He introduced himself as Saeed Ahmed, um, and we, he wanted to come inside, explain to him that there were no services um, at the time. He um, still didn't understand why he can't come inside. I tried telling him that there, unfortunately right now you can't come inside and you'll have to come back and you'll have to leave, you come back another time, but right now it's closed. Right now there's nothing to come inside for. He didn't really understand that. Um, he kept insisting to come inside. At the same time, I also asked him, by the way, by any chance were you here last week? And he said yes. And he actually admitted to uh, defacing the sign and going to my backyard as well on, my pro on our property. But why wouldn't? The man just come right up and, and say that and do that. I mean, nobody ever told him that's not how you do things in Canada. We didn't have a values test before we brought over a million people from Jew-hating countries. And don't think that they're not Christian haters, too. That's an excerpt from The Ezra Levant Show, which is a show I do every day. I do a monologue, interview an interesting guest, and then I read my hate mail. But you've got to subscribe to it, which you can do at premium.rebelnews.com.